Hello, my name is David Ewan from the Resurrection Center. I head up the Bravehearted Ministries at the Resurrection Center. Welcome, thank you for coming. And I wanna to talk to you about the question that people have been asking in these uncertain times, where is God? That's the question a lot of people are asking with this COVID-19 coronavirus that has gone around the world, where is God? Um, today's new vocabulary has words like social distancing, quarantine, ventilators, masks, job layoffs. That's the set of vocabulary we've been hearing lately. In today's uncertain times, people are asking questions. Have you been asking questions? The common question is, where is God? You see, that is not the question. The question is, where are you? So you see, God gives us free will, but he guides us. With the teaching of God's principles, we learn about how we can become the people that God wants us to be. So don't ask where God is. Ask, where are you? It is you who will learn from God how you should be. God knows where he is. You don't have to ask that. We don't know where we are sometimes. We have to ask where we are. We need to know how to be motivated, organized, disciplined, ethical, educated, and strong with endurance. So our agenda that we'll be talking about in today's discussion is, what is our weakness? What is it? Let me give you a hint. It's more than just sin. It's ourselves. That's the first thing we'll talk about. The next thing we'll talk about is how we can become stronger. I'm gonna give you a spoiler alert. It's God. We'll talk about that. The next thing we'll talk about is the keys to fighting against evil. That's the armor of God. And we're gonna talk about that. I'll give some examples, then we'll talk about how to use it. And number four, we'll talk about overcoming the odds and winning. And that's how to wear the armor of God. It's one thing to know about the armor of God, but then what do you do with it? That's what we're talking about today. You see, in our war with Satan and his society and our human weaknesses, we need spiritual help. God provides the powerful armor of God to protect us and give us victory, okay? Let me tell you, there are some signs of spiritual weakness in our lives. The most common one, is a bad temper. The other one is failing to assemble and be with other people of like mind, other Christians, the fellowship. The other one is the absence of prayer and Bible reading. With the absence of prayer, you're not talking to God. No wonder you don't know where he is. That's why you're asking the question. And then the Bible reading, it's to understand his principles and his teachings, okay? The fourth one is no integrity. You're not trustworthy to yourself and therefore not trustworthy to others, okay? And number five, that goes along with no integrity, it's the selfishness. It's the selfishness. Those are the signs of spiritual weakness, okay? Now let's talk about the characteristics of spiritual weakness, okay? The characteristics of spiritual weakness comes from people who lead in their own power rather than God's power. They rely on their own strength rather than the one who gives us strength. Uh, number two, they're reactive and not proactive. Proactive is that planning in advance and preparing. Reactive is just trying to keep your head above water. Number three, maybe at their job, they can lead an organization, but when they go home, they can't lead their family and their family's falling apart. The next one, number four, these are people who would lead out of charisma, meaning popularity, rather than crucifixion. That means sacrifice. Um, and when you see some of these people, they're two different people, two faces. They're one way inside the church, and they're a different way when you see them in the street. 
Now, they also, number, five, uh, number six, I should say, uh, they're aware of everyone else's sin, but they're not aware of their own. They're quick to judge other people, but they don't know that God can judge themselves, that they have their own issues to worry about. So those are the characteristics of spiritual weakness. Now let's talk about the reasons you need the armor of God. These are the reasons you need the armor of God. Number one, you have to fight against a serious opposition. Let me tell you, Satan is very serious. The spiritual world is very serious. You need everything possible to equip yourselves to fight against this serious opposition. Number two, you need protection from attacks. Those that are walking with the Lord are under constant attack. And so you got to be prepared for the attacks. And number three, you need to know the scale of God's provision. You need to know how big the weapon, the armor of God that is given to you really is. You have an abundance of power that God gives you. You just need to know how to wear it and how to use it. So let's talk about the six pieces of the armor of God. And it's from chapter 6 of Ephesians, verse 14 through 17. So again, it's Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 14 through 17. It's the belt of truth. It's the breastplate of righteousness. It's the shoes of the gospel of peace. It's the shield of faith. It's the helmet of salvation. And it's the sword of the spirit. Again, that's Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14 through 17. The belt of truth. The breastplate of righteousness. The shoes of the gospel of peace. The shield of faith the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit. You can read more by going to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14 through 17. So what is the armor of God intended for? What's it intended for? Why do we have the armor of God? You see, the Bible tells us we are in a war, and our adversary, Satan, the devil, is bent on destroying us kill, steal, destroy. Those are the three things Satan does. To kill your dreams, to steal your opportunities, and destroy your future. The Apostle Paul warns us to beware of Satan's devices and tactics. And we learn about that in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. You see, all this is happening behind the scenes in the spiritual world. It's a real world but it has great influence over the physical world. Satan and the demons are invisible. And it, well, let me tell you this. Satan wants you to believe that he doesn't exist. And that's what we mean by the invisible world. Satan can win against many people because those people believe that he doesn't exist. See, without the awareness, it's easy for him to take control. Okay, he's able to sway society and suggest wrong thoughts to us without even us realizing he is there. Okay, so with that being said, you and I have to purposely and deliberately put on the full armor of God. And when we do this, we are showing our enemy Satan that we are ready to stand against any tricks, schemes, or deception that he tries to bring our way through the power of Jesus Christ and the armor of God. We can be protected. The church and each of us individually moves forward on our knees. Praying reminds us of the battle. It reminds us of the source of our strength and defense, and it reminds God that we are fully committed to following him as obedient and faithful soldiers. We can do this. That's what prayer is for. We receive the instruction from God. We receive the strength from God. But we must wear the armor of God. 
Again, that's the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit. And again, that's explained in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14 through 17. Okay, prayer and Bible study are the most powerful tools for combating sa uh, Satan's weapons. When we put on this whole armor of God, we will be prepared for Satan's attempts to attack us. And he'll be able to try to attack us, but fail if we wear the armor of God. The whole the idea of pride, envy, lust for forbidden pleasures, itching ears, disappointment, discouragement, doubt, or division. Those are Satan's weapons, okay? He has other tricks that he can use as well. So let's talk about how can we become stronger against spiritual attacks? How can we become stronger against spiritual attacks? Number one, read Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 20. Be aware of the armor of God, okay? Number two, put on the armor of God each day in anticipation of spiritual attacks. Be ready. Number three, pray without ceasing. Speak to God. Get instruction from, from God. Receive what you need to be proactive instead of reactive. Be prepared for the attacks Satan may bring upon you. And number four, spend time in worship with other fellow believers, other Christians. Why? We can't fight this alone. That's why we have a church congregation. You need fellow like believers who are with you in the same fight that you have. They also wear the armor of God. So you see, we're not just one person, we're an army fighting against Satan. So let's talk about the four ways to take up the armor of God and win. Number one, know your enemy and win. Number one, know your enemy and win. You see, first of Peter chapter five, verse eight says, be of sober spirit and be on alert. Your adversary, the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. You see, our enemy is deceptive, manipulative, and selfish. That's who they are. They're deceptive, they're manipulative, and they're selfish. Okay? So how do you discern this? You'll see jealous behavior. You'll see behavior of intimidation and you'll see behavior of someone being afraid of you. Maybe that you're better than them. So these deceptive, manipulative, and selfish demons will attack you because they're either jealous of you, they're intimidated by you, or they're afraid of you, okay? So number two, take the sword of the spirit and win. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17, the scripture says, Take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. What's the Word of God? It's what's written in the Bible. These are the principles and the teachings that God wants to instill inside of us so that we can become the people that God wants us to be. Number three, take the shield of faith and win. And Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16 says, Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And number four, stand firm and win. And the scripture, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13 through 14 says, Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand, to stand firm. So now let's talk about the characteristics of a child of God wearing the armor of God. I'll read two scriptures. The first one is James chapter four, verse seven. 
James chapter 4, verse 7. Submit yourselves then to God, res resist the devil, and he will flee from you. I'll say that again. Submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Then let's take a look at Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 22. Do not be afraid of them. The Lord your God himself will fight for you. What does that mean? It means stand strong. That means to be brave. Uh, the next one, you're never alone. That means you don't have to feel empty. God loves you. That means you are worthy in God's eyes. That makes it worth fighting for who you are as God called you to be. But you're not alone. God fights for you. You see, God's got your back. Now let's talk about the result of wearing the armor of God. Here's the result of wearing the armor of God. You see, God holds the victory over sin and death in this world. The word of truth, that's the Bible, as a weapon against the enemy's schemes. The word of truth shows us what we need to do. By conducting ourselves in the manner we should be based on its teachings and principles, we will see the manifestation, which is the positive outcome. Number three, you can proclaim Satan does not have authority over our lives for we've been set free. We've been set free because that's what God intended. Okay, so let's talk about how do we become useful in our fight against the evil one, against Satan. So here are the principles we need to be aware of to be effective. Number one, we have to first know who we are in Christ. This is why we talked about the importance of attending church, reading the Bible, prayer, being immersed in the word of, the, of truth, which is the Bible, okay? So this way we rely on God's power and take direction from the Holy Spirit. That's the purpose of the Holy Spirit. It's to teach us and to guide us. That is a gift we were given 2,000 years ago. Number two, agree with the word of God. Don't fight it. Agree with it. Know that it is true. You see, the word of God is consistent and it does not change. Learn the truth in God's word and in applying that truth, you will find yourself on the right side of the spiritual conflict. That means on God's side, regardless of what others think of you. It doesn't matter what other people think of you. What matters is that you're on the A team. You're on the winning team. Not only that, we talked about the Holy Spirit. Agree with the Holy Spirit. Take instruction from the Holy Spirit. Receive even greater the Holy Spirit. You see, every time you exercise self-control instead of losing your temper, every time you choose to forgive instead of harboring bitterness, every time you decide to consider others' needs before your own and make unselfish decisions, you are training yourself for battle and becoming a much stronger warrior against Satan. Number four, you'll see the possibilities. See the possibilities. The enemy would seek to blind us of all the possibilities that God wants to give us. You see, God has called us to be a certain person that he has already ordained us to be. We just have to follow that path of light, which is where God wants us to be. So if we look at things from God's perspective and have an agreement in his word, we can start to do battle in all kinds of situations that Satan throws at us. So do not accept defeat, but allow God to enlarge your vision of what he wants you to do in your life. So let's take a summary of what we've talked about today. We've talked about a lot. We've talked, number one, the signs of spiritual weakness. Number two, we talked about the characteristics of spiritual weakness. Uh, number three, the reasons you need the armor of God. 
number four, what is the armor of God? Okay. Number five, what the armor of God is intended for. Number six, how to become stronger against spiritual attacks. Number seven, the four ways to take up the armor of God and win. And number eight, the characteristics of a child of God wearing the armor of God. Number nine, the result of wearing the armor of God. And number 10, becoming useful in the fight against evil. We started this conversation talking about the question, where is God? And a lot of people are asking that during this whole COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic that's been going on all around the world. And in, in, in my business, I speak with people all around the world, and that is the question that I'm asked. And I tell everyone, the reason why they're struggling with that question is that's the wrong question to ask. The question is, where are you? And in answering that question, that's when we started talking about the armor of God and what to do about it. God's given us the tools. Where are you when you need to have the tools? Okay, we've talked about that today. So today we put on the full armor the full armor to guard our lives against attack. We put on the belt of truth to protect against lies and deception. We put on the breastplate of righteousness to protect our hearts from the temptations we battle. We put on the gospel of peace on our feet so we're ready to take your light wherever you send us this day. This is God's light. We choose to walk in the peace and freedom of God's spirit and not to be overcome with fear and anxious thoughts. And we take up the God's shield of faith that will extinguish all the darts and threats hurled our way by the enemy, and that's Satan. You see, we believe in God's power to protect us and choose to trust in God. We put on the helmet of salvation, which covers our minds and thoughts, and reminding us we are the children of the day, forgiven and set free, saved by the grace of Christ Jesus. We take up the sword of the Spirit, God's every word, the one offensive uh, weapon against us for battle, which has the power to demolish strongholds, uh, be alive, to be active, and sharper than any double-edged sword. So, in all of this, we have to remember, we have all sinned and deserve God's judgment. God the Father sent his only Son to satisfy that judgment for those who believe in him. Jesus, the creator and eternal son of God, who lived a sinless life, loves us so much that he died for our sins, taking the punishment that we deserve. He was buried and rose from the dead, as the Bible tells us. If you truly believe and trust this in your heart, receiving Jesus alone as your savior, declaring Jesus is Lord, you will be saved from judgment and spend eternity with God in heaven. That is my conversation with you today. I bless you today. Thank you for joining me. My name is David Ewan. I head up the Bravehearted Ministries at the Resurrection Center. From the Resurrection Center, my name is David Ewan.